<laughs> Excellent! <laughs> but it was the next thing that really got me. It was to say, the soldier took no further part in the battle <laughs> that day. <laughs> that day, it was in two separate halves. A miracle to science. But by 1471, the period of the Kingmaker, this sword is redundant on the battlefield. You're going to take a sword to war? Claymore. Isn't one of these? Claymore. It's one of those. Now this is the weapon of the 15th century knight, the hand and a half sword. Now you'll be given your first one of these at the age of six years old. Me, I want one. That's right. You'll be given your first razor sharp sword at the age of six. And you'd use it to practice with every single day. Now you practice with one of these. This here is what they called a cutting post. And it was here where you practice your blade speed and your footwork. And you finished every single training session by cutting that post into two. Now, these posts were chosen because they are the same strength as human bone. So when you're practicing to cut that post into two, you are practicing to cut off a man's arm. So that is what I'm going to do for you guys right now this second. What? Ladies and gentlemen, there is another lie. <coughs> we are not really medieval knights. No, no way. Fact, I am a 54 year old diabetic. <laughs> and I picked these two up at the job centre. <laughs> no, we're not medieval knights, but we are a type of modern knight because we train in the Western martial arts for the things we do here at Warwick Castle. But our forefathers had that massive advantage. They started at the age of six. So, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot guarantee that Jay will be successful in this post cut. <laughs> we need to get behind him. We need to chant his name and we need to clap at our hands. We need to go Jay! 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 Demonstration of the hand and half sword. Okay? Imagine if that was your arm. Very scary stuff. But a knight needs much more than just a powerful sword. He needs accuracy and control to ensure that each time he releases his blade, his cuts will be lethal. But lads, how can I do this? How can I demonstrate accuracy and control? How about fruit? Fruit? Not a bad idea. Nice juicy apples. What are we gonna put the apples on? Hey? What should we put the apples on? Hey, you've got a head over here. I think we've got to feel that. Someone tapping your head then. <laughs> so they're volunteering their children now, that's great. <laughs> Shall we? Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay, we've got it. Mark? Could you come here, please? Me? Yes, you. Wait a minute. You're not putting an apple on my head. <laughs> not exactly, no. No, we wouldn't do that to you. No, no, no. In fact, it's really easy. And you're going to love it. So just stand just there for me, and uh, kneel down, that's it, kneel down, and then hold out your hands, so you can hold the apples! No! Oh yes! No way! Ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you, would you like to see me cut the 
those apples with this sword from Mark's hands! Yeah. You horrible lot! <laughs> Not one no! I wonder, it's like music to my ears, apples. Come on then, let's do it. Let's go. Just one question. What? Has this been risk assessed? Uh, we'll do it after, okay? okay. <laughs> Alright, just, just give me a second. Okay. Get yourself up. I've got it. This is a bit... Alright. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. I'm ready, Let's Go on. Do it now. Do it now. <laughs> right! What? Now, what you were all about to see is very, very, very dangerous. <laughs> Sir Lewis's blade, it's razor sharp, Mark. <gasps> so, for the same reasons as we mentioned with the postcard, if Sir Lewis cannot make it all of the way through the apples, or if Sir Mark loses a few fingers, let's make sure that Sir Lewis gets a massive round of applause on that second oh, apple cut regardless. Okay, here we go. Good luck, Sir Lewis. Thank you. Good luck, Sir Mark. Right, here we go. Can we give him a massive round of applause? Yeah. It looks like he's still working on Bondo. I've got an awesome Denethor. Denethor. Son of a Thalion. Ladies and gentlemen, though, there is another lie. Swords on battlefield. <coughs> they were incredibly rare. Why? Horrendously expensive. That's always a good reason. But of course, you've got spears, axes. And you've got percussion weapons like this. The mace, ladies and gentlemen. Now this is a particular type of mace. It has a name. This is called a, a nobbler. Nobbler? A nobbler? <laughs> Anybody here ever been nobbled? <laughs> nobbled? You've probably got to be English and of a certain age, yeah? That's what it's named after! Now this was the favourite weapon of the fighting clergy. <laughs> fighting clergy? 13th century. Abbots, pull on armour, go onto the battlefield and they would fight. <coughs> but the church said, you must never use an edge weapon against a fellow Christian. So they use these instead. <laughs> there is always a way to bend the rules. But how do we demonstrate this, Lewis? Well, we've used fruit already. So I think we need to use salad. 